The Ethereum merge is upon us. That's right, something big is about to happen in the cryptosphere. For thousands of ETH miners, it's a question of when the change called the merge will happen. The merge that may become the bane of Ethereum mining as we know it. Now, the merge may sound like a sublime moment that will herald the world's inhabitants into a crypto hailing singularity. However, what's coming is an integral part of the Ethereum roadmap. And real quick, whether you're a miner or not, you may want to listen to this. So as long as you have some ETH in your digital wallet, take a few moments as what we're about to discuss may be important to you. So if you've been around long enough, you already know that everything is in a name. And perhaps that's the reason that the Ethereum Foundation also recently retired the term Ethereum 2.0. So according to the foundation, the terms ETH 1.0 and ETH 2.0 merely describe the upgrades in progress. So if you're curious about Ethereum staking and Ethereum 2.0, then this video is for you. We'll show you how you can positively contribute to the Ethereum blockchain and the possibility of earning some rewards in the process. And remember, if you'd like to stay updated on all things crypto, make sure you click on that subscribe button and turn on notifications. Also follow CoinGecko on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook for all the latest crypto updates. Now let's jump in. Do you remember when Vitalik Buterin made the big announcement in May 2021? If not, let me remind you, he said that plans for the much anticipated upgrade were still on track. Since then, members of the Ethereum community have been waiting with bated breath. I mean, there was the promise of dumping the energy intensive proof of work model for a lighter non-computationally or energy intensive proof of stake model. But now lovers of Ethereum 2.0 face a crucial decision. Should they stake? or not. As you'll soon discover from this video, the answer to this dilemma boils down to knowing how to balance the long-standing calculus of risk and reward. That's because while Ethereum 2.0 gives the promise of steady returns, the network upgrade is laden with lockups and risks that could create illiquidity. But ultimately, will it make a difference? Well, yeah, there's a big difference between Ethereum 1.0 and Ethereum 2.0. And that's to be found in the consensus mechanism, which is the system used to confirm transactions. The ETH 1.0 network consensus, known for its proof of work mechanism, becomes the execution layer, where the new ETH 2.0 upgrade that uses the proof of stake mechanism becomes the consensus layer. Now, the proof of work mechanism used by Ethereum miners to validate transactions is not only energy intensive, but also rewards the fastest miners only. On the other hand, the emerging proof of stake mechanism takes validators and non-miners to verify transactions. More energy efficient as it uses less computing power for block creation. The way things are currently, mining Ethereum through proof of work requires heavy investment in mining equipment consumes a lot of energy and only favors a few. The switch to Ethereum 2.0 or the consensus layer is meant to be a game changer that allows easier participation. And that's where ETH staking comes into play. Well, then the big question is, what is ETH staking and how does it work? Well, staking refers to a process through which you can participate in a blockchain's activities. Most cryptocurrency networks offer users a reward for staking different coins. And you may wanna compare staking with a dividend paying stock. So the network used the staked tokens to keep themselves secure and validate transactions. So is there a reward for staking these coins? Well, yes. However, it will depend on how long you're willing to tie up your coins and the number of people staking. So who is a staker? Well, also known as a validator. A staker processes transactions, stores information, and adds blocks to the network in a new consensus model. So instead of buying mining hardware, you stake your ETH coins, meaning you lock up your funds in a smart contract, and for that, you earn a return in the form of a proportional share of the fees that users pay on the Ethereum network. So a validator's task is similar to crypto miners, verifying transactions to eliminate fraud. And as a validator, you propose a block depending on how much ETH you have staked and how long you've staked it for. So when there's enough attestations from other validators that they've seen a block, the block is added to the blockchain. The smart contract automatically rewards validators for successfully proposing a block through a process called minting or forging. But then what happens if your ETH 2.0 staking node goes down? Now this may not sound very pleasant, but there, there are penalties also known as inactivity leaks. So for instance, there's a penalty for staying offline where validators can lose about 15.8% of their stake if they remain offline for a year or 0.3% for staying offline for only a week. But also validators are penalized when they fail to create attestations and the penalties become harsher if the network fails to finalize. So what are the different ways to stake Ethereum? Well, let's look at the centralized exchange route first. 
E-staking has become a lucrative business and cryptocurrency exchanges such as Coinbase, the largest such facility in North America, offer this service. However, staking doesn't work if you're interested in securing short-term gains with your digital assets. With exchanges like Coinbase and Kraken offering staking as a service, many users interested in making passive income are now getting convinced to lock up their ETH in smart contracts. But there's a catch. Once you lock up your ETH with Coinbase, you'll need a dose of patience, at least until the transition to Ethereum 2.0 is complete, since that's when the merge will finally happen. And there's one more thing you need to remember. Coinbase mainly serves US-based customers and users from a few select countries. So make sure to check whether your country of residence is included before your venture. Another centralized exchange option is Kraken, but please take note of some stark differences in their modus operandi. So first, Coinbase completely locks up your ETH, where Kraken gives you a small leeway to trade your ETH, but most importantly, you can use your stake as collateral. And here's some bad news. With all the staking has to offer, US and Canadian residents can't really join the parties thanks to strict rules from the local financial watchdogs. Please pick up on my sarcasm. Now the best thing about staking ETH on Coinbase is there's no minimum amounts. So if you can't make the 32 ETH required to become a validator, there's room to join a staking pool. Now since Coinbase is a legitimate trusted exchange, you may not need to worry much about getting scammed, but then if you join a staking pool, you'll earn 25% less commission. All right, now let's take a look at Ethereum staking the DeFi way. Now this route is a little more involved, so if you're not a tech savvy enthusiast and you still wanna stake your ETH, you can avoid taking the direct route and stake via a decentralized autonomous organization or a DAO. Now DAOs have staking pools made of ETH hodlers that can help you out with several issues. For starters, you won't have to worry about registering as a validator and coughing up the 32 ETH or waiting until the end of the lockup period. You can choose a platform like Lido, an Ethereum-based staking platform, and not a cryptocurrency exchange like Coinbase or Kraken. So Lido allows you to stake as much or as little as you want, and your funds aren't locked up like they are with exchanges. Now with over 80% market share in the ETH staking field, Lido is a market leader with over $10 billion staked. Using the decentralized staking route, the platform enables users to stake any amount of coins, thereby evading the minimum requirement of 32 ETH. And once users have staked their ETH on Lido, they can still use their digital assets as collateral. This way, they don't have to make the difficult choice of deciding whether they're going to stake or earn the attractive DeFi returns. Also, the DAO that governs Lido facilitates the removal of individual staking minimums. So there's several advantages for taking this route, which include the following. You no longer have to struggle to deposit 32 ETH. You can stop staking when you feel like you've had enough. You're guaranteed of receiving a staking reward at the end of the staking period and you don't have to worry about installing staking hardware. Okay, so now that we've covered how to stake your ETH, what are the benefits and returns of doing so? Well, under normal circumstances, this will range between 6% and 15%. For a minimum investment of at least 32 ETH, this can fetch anywhere between two and five ETH. Even though it sounds like an attractive and easy way to make passive income, there's a catch you still have to deal with several technical issues in the process. First of all, even though you may not need a high-powered computer, but for you to support a validator block, your computer must remain on all the time. Also, the ETH you stake must be locked all the way till the consensus layer goes live, which might be a few months or maybe longer. And finally, the amount of reward you can make is directly proportional to the amount of ETH you stake. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground, so where do you go from here? Well, whether you're gonna stake or not is a decision that only you can make. You could indeed earn some yield when you stake ETH for your role in helping secure the network. However, remember that there are more incentives at the beginning when there's little ETH stake, meaning the rewards will reduce as more people join the party. Also, there's still a few risks associated with ETH staking. So as such, it's your responsibility to individually assess, understand, and accept the related risks before you decide to stake. Having said that, if you join the Ethereum 2.0 network as an early validator, you stand a high chance of getting higher returns and node authority. And as usual, the catch is, the more people join the e-staking party as validators, the lower validator rewards become over time. But if you're passionate about the crypto ecosystem, smart contract adoption, and Ethereum staking as a way to support the Ethereum blockchain, then do your own research and make an educated decision. So if you'd like to get more insights on ETH staking, then enjoy this CoinGecko article linked below and let us know what you 
think in the comments below as well. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow CoinGecko on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook for all the latest crypto updates. So thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next video.